Looks like we got some people on here. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. And I'll see if I can navigate this thing. Let's go. We got Q&A. We got participants. See if we can. Uh, attendees. Awesome. Got quite a few people on here already. Uh, I'm hoping you guys can hear me and see me. Yep, I got a chat box here. Hi, TT. Yep, we got a few people coming in. Uh, if you guys can see the chat box, just say hello, maybe where you're from. Uh, and if you can see my face, see my presentation, and hear me, that would be awesome. Greetings and love from Switzerland. Hello, Maya Morph. Good to have you. Carmel Matheson, can hear and see you. Awesome. Welcome. Nikki Cornfield from Perth. Alexander, oh, it's going quick. Uh, from Canterbury, UK. Wow. Blue Mountains, New South Wales. Carmel, welcome. Mika from Sydney. John Winton from Perth. Susanna from Perth. Kathy Daw from Sunshine Coast. Paul Romeo. Romeo. Paul Romeo. And Fleur from Melbourne, welcome. Vincent Van Voltenberg from Texas, good to have you. VVV, good to see you. V3, awesome. Sky Nixon from Melbourne, welcome. Rena, we got Rena here, looking forward to hearing about the vision. John from Sydney, Mulligan. Nicole Galloway from Streaky Bay, Southern Australia. Got my greens, I'm ready to go. Selena from Sydney, welcome. Love heart. Vincent von Boltenberg, got some glasses on now, looking pretty cool. Uh, yep, Paul B from Perth, Western Australia, Sydney, Hunter Valley. Daniela from Sydney as well. So I'm just gonna check in on the time. I am at 3.01 Bali time, which is same as Perth. Uh, which is our scheduled time to move ahead. So what I'm actually going to do, and I'm going to hope you guys can hear this. I'm going to play this video because some people haven't actually seen this video. Some people have registered for the webinar, but not seen the promotional video. Uh, 2 a.m. Wow. In Texas. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll have a recording of this, hopefully, um, that we can send out as well. Uh, I hope that recording works. Maybe I should... Uh, pop out of here real quick actually let me see and just make sure that I'm recording so I apologize guys you can probably see everything I'm doing but I just want to double back this up make sure we're all good yep 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 looking 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 good and fantastic uh, so I'll get that going beautiful so I'm gonna check in one more time with you guys let's see here on the chat box and if you guys want to let me know if you can hear this that would be great i'm going to start a quick video and let that run and then we'll get started on this dream and vision uh, that i've had for a very long time that is manifesting very quickly so let me just get that started you guys let me know if you can hear this video yeah so i'm just out here at the nightcap village and I brought my dad out here and we got a bunch of us and we're just going out to check out this absolutely spectacular property. Essentially, the vision here is to create a community where we can have about 300 sites to begin with. And the idea is to be sustainable. So it's to get off the grid. We don't have power lines running all over the property. We don't have, you know, big sewage lines and water lines. We use solar panels use compostable toilets, use some of these beautiful technologies for building that are kind of recyclable, yet still modern and looking beautiful. The whole concept is to have as little an imprint as possible. And this is the view which people will wake up every morning. We have the border ranges, Mount Warning, we have Sphinx Lock, and some places 270 panoramas. I could sit here and look at this all day. When I came here, basically, 
Uh, we looked all over the property. There's some beautiful lake front spots, but as soon as I came up here and saw this view, uh, I changed the name of this spot to Tolman Ridge. I knew my dad would want a place potentially up here or by the lake, and I'd want a place. So the vision I see here, especially up on the ridge and different places, is we just want to have so much food growing that the dream is that no one has to put their hand in their pocket. We can go help ourselves to fruit and veg from around here, from supplying the local shops. If we have too much, wouldn't it be good to supply the local hospital? Imagine actually having a community of like-minded individuals. Something that we can all come together and feel like an actual community. I really believe that this property has that potential. By being a part of this, the people that are coming into it are also sharing in, um, I guess you could say, a business kind of aspect. Well, absolutely. Um, there's a commercial precinct, no more than two minutes along the road from here. A fantastic fruit shop with Lowesley down there. Our van park has been improved. General store, which is a licensed bottle shop. They have a beautiful restaurant with play area, really good vegan friendly, plant-based friendly foods. Uh, and then they have a petrol station. Even though you're buying into potentially two and a half acres, and yes, you, you'll have the title for that, it's not just the two and a half acres. You're buying into anywhere from four to 6,000 acres, and we're sharing it. So all the businesses that are on here are going to give some of the profits to the actual people that are buying into this community. Um, the idea is you don't have to pay land taxes, you don't have to pay fees, you potentially are actually getting paid to live here. We're going to have a lot more information about what types of buildings you can have, what the bylaws are. If this project resonates with you and you really want to be a part of it, and you come here and you check it out, you feel into the land and you meet us all, I would highly recommend contacting us and letting us know that, hey, maybe this is something that you're interested in. Whether it's an investment idea or it's actually somewhere you want to live and be a part of an amazing community of like-minded people, definitely check us out, book a tour, and come and see us. So thanks for watching, guys. Excellent. So now that we've all seen this, um, I will get started. Uh, looks like we got a lot more people on the call. So if I didn't call you out, welcome and thanks for being here. Um, like I said before, this will also be recorded. So we can send you out the recording later if you want to share it with anybody, friends, family, whoever, you can also do that. So what is this project? Um, it's 3,500 plus acres of property with endless potential. Um, I've been involved with this project for just over two years now. And obviously something of this size requires a lot, a lot of love, a lot of attention, a lot of process processes um, to get through to make something like this happen and, and it's been an absolute pleasure um, like I said I was approached over two years ago I love the entire concept um, I love you know when I met the people who I'll be talking about uh, I felt their heart space and where they were coming from and um, I went to the land and you know when you go to this land you just can't explain it um, and that's the biggest thing like yes, I'm gonna go through a presentation I'm gonna show you guys a lot of stuff, but really uh, It comes down to actually going to this land and checking it out. It's probably the most beautiful place in Australia one of the most beautiful places, you know, I've ever been um, there's rivers. There's lakes. There's hiking trails. There's endless forestry and wildlife and it's absolutely gorgeous so I'll crack on. Uh, what we're looking at is a project um, of approximately 300. 311 is what we're going for, two and a half acre land spots. So that means that if you decide to be involved with this project, you could actually purchase two and a half acres. And in that two and a half acres, you have access to clearing one acre to build your own home, to plant gardens and trees and doing whatever you like. Um, you know, as long as it's up to spec with, you know, where our government, you know, allows us to build, making sure it's safe and modern and beautiful. Um, and then one and a half acres is going to be left just open, beautiful landscape, just like it is. And I just have a link here. If you guys want to check it out later on, tylertolman.com forward slash village, you can get an info pack there and more information about it. So our focus 
with creating this community is really about health. Um, it's getting off the grid potentially and planting our own foods. It's about community, like-minded people coming together with a, an intention, an intention of actually, you know, maybe being a part of something where we're not just segregated in our houses and we have no clue what our neighbor's name is or, you know, even hating our neighbor because their dog, dog poops in our yard. It's like, you know, maybe it's time to actually come together, get to know each other, have a community center, um, you know, and like-minded people, you know, people that are interested in evolution and growth, um, you know, personal growth, uh, interested in health, interested in the same types of activities or games or yoga or Pilates or, you know, whatever it is. So this is about connection, it's about sustainability, and it's about bringing together like-minded individuals who are coming together um, to evolve and to be open. And yes, you know, we can hide out in our houses occasionally to, you know, suck on our thumbs and recuperate from the world every once in a while. So what is the vision of this place? Uh, it says here, imagine a world where you didn't have to pay to live. You know, it's a really interesting thing, you know, paying rent, paying for food, paying for water, you know, water just by itself, you know, when I'm traveling, like, especially in Australia, it seems like you buy a bottle of water for $7, five, six bucks. It's like, it's crazy. So the current world we live in, we're working long hours. Imagine if you could work on site. Uh, actually have a job, you know, on the location or be an entrepreneur and doing your own thing and having access to everything that's close to you where you don't really have to go anywhere else. A lot of people pay high mortgages and rent and land taxes and things of this nature. Um, I'll get into a little bit later how we can avoid these types of things. Uh, but in general, it's because the businesses involved, uh, the commercial precinct and other businesses on this land and part of this community all give a portion of their profits back to the actual um, community entity in general, which covers land taxes and land improvements and all these sorts of things. So currently a lot of people are paying a lot for foods. And the idea is when we go out there, I've already been out there planting avocado trees and other trees and things myself. Um, Cause obviously a lot of these trees take quite a while to grow. So I want to have, I want to be able to walk out, you know, of my house and be able to just simply pick right off my own trees and out of the garden and make myself lunch and dinner, uh, mostly with the foods that I'm growing myself and obviously having heaps of neighbors that are growing all kinds of food and basically food growing everywhere um, that just makes it super easy. Um, paying high energy bills, you know, electricity is just something that everybody has to have. And it just, you know, a lot of times gets more and more expensive and just having your own solar energy and other, uh, you know, freer forms of energy. Obviously there's an upfront cost but we can minimize this thing, these things as a community um, and contacting the right types of suppliers. When we have a large project like this, we can pretty much get a lot of this stuff at wholesale. I apologize, my dog's just biting the door and I'm just gonna move it along. <laughs> Every time I run a webinar, I got this little, Beautiful little chihuahua that just loved to come chew on something. He's just out in the corner of my eye like, eh, get out of here. So, yes, anyways, uh, spend less time with loved ones in the current world, high energy bills. You know, the thing is out here we can have solar power. We can actually start to bring in some of these other forms of power as well. There's vortexes you can actually put into a river that are quite small that do provide a lot of energy, you know, you can always use wind, solar, and these sorts of things that are quite fantastic. And obviously, you know, with creating a community like this, you know, there's gonna be lots of families with kids. We can create our own types um, of daycare and schooling and things of this nature and, and be closer as a community to our own families and to people that we actually want to be around. And a big part of this for me personally is, you know, I don't live in Australia, but if I had to send my kids, you know, to a daycare or to a school where they're going to force them 
to use certain products on their skin that might be toxic. Um, they're just exposed to a lot of processed foods, which aren't the greatest chemical preservatives, artificial colors, all these types of things that are potentially um, exposed to all the time. And then other things that could potentially be forced on my children. I'm just not okay with. Um, I think that we should all be able to make our own decision. And if you want to have your kids get something, you can go take them and get it. And if you don't want them to get it, um, you know, we should be able to make that choice. And so, you know, I'm not being super specific here, but I think everybody can understand what I'm talking about. Um, it's about getting off the grid and out of the main controls of the city and the main pollution of the city. Um, there are studies. I do extensive research in human health. That's what I do for a living. I travel and I speak on public health uh, amongst many other things, but that's my main gig. And the number one cause of death, according to massive comprehensive studies, is air quality. Air quality is the number one cause of death because it's related to many of the leading causes of disease. So the air quality that we have access to out in this place is absolutely pristine. You've got thousands and thousands of trees and different types of plants that are constantly filtering the air. They're also buffering the electromagnetic frequencies that are coming from cell phone towers and all kinds of other things that in my opinion are just gonna get more powerful and a little bit worse. Um, and, you know, I think we're already seeing the effects of some of these things. You know, there's schools, there's now, it's in the actual news where there's schools where there's high rates of brain tumors in children and in teachers. And it seems to be children and teachers all in the same types of classes that have a cell phone tower very close to it. This is happening at universities as well. So this information is coming out more and more and our technology is just going faster and faster, which is a great thing to be able to have the use of technology and internet and, and communicate like we are right now. Um, but moving into certain uh, wavelengths of frequencies, microwave frequencies can potentially be damaging to our human organism. I'm not quite ready to integrate with AI yet. So I, you know, like to use the technology, but I can plug it in and unplug it. So I know I'm getting into that pretty quick, but I basically just up front want to say, Hey guys, I'm doing a land tour. I'm actually going to be on the site. So if you want to join me and come around, uh, we got the local, um, origines. Okay. The local mob there. Um, the original people of the land will be welcoming us with a smoke ceremony where they take us through a sacred ceremony and welcome us to the land. And then we'll have an opportunity to actually get up amongst this place. Um, this is one of the most sacred land sites in all of Australia, right at the foot of Mount Warning. This is where the 13 original tribes got together to talk about trade and, and communicate and get together and, and thrive and talk about their laws. And this is where all the lawmen came together, 13 tribes of them. Uh, there's amazing sacred birthing pools for the women um, back in this time. And we have the local uh, original people that are there, the original sovereign people that are there that are giving their blessing to this project as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later when it comes to tribal title and things of that nature. I want to give you a quick introduction to the people that I've been working with on this project. Uh, first and foremost, this is Peter von Leishout. Um, this property was originally his. Um, now the property is sitting in the nightcap uh, village entity. And he's, you know, been approached by many different projects and to do things with this property, but he's had a vision for his entire life of creating a sustainable type of project and community that would honor this land because it truly is gorgeous and sacred and it, it shouldn't be, you know, a big high density type of community place plugged into wires and all that sort of stuff. A few other individuals. This is Philip Dixon. Philip Dixon's a civil engineer. He's helping out with a lot of the roads and the planning and different things that we're doing. He's been there since day one. Sherry Stokes, um, she's been managing everything in the offices, working on all the accounts, 
uh, pretty much managing every aspect of get togethers and, and the project in general. Uh, Rich is our real estate guy who's on site, also dedicated to sustainable living and growing. And this is his lifetime dream. He's fully invested in this project himself uh, and very passionate about it. So he also runs tours there. So you'll get to know him. He knows a lot about this project uh, and a genuine, beautiful soul. And then we have Derek Zillman. Um, Derek uh, has been a lifesaver coming in and he is the professional one in this entire process. He's um, funded over $2 billion in projects in the last, last year or so doing other things. He's a project manager. He's overly qualified for this project. He keeps us up to speed um, now on a weekly basis with updates, everything that's happening. He's working with a company called Planet. Planet is the ones that are putting this project together and making it happen as far as the DA approval process. So there are ecological studies and fire hazard things and looking at the flora and fauna and there's so many things that have to happen for a project of this magnitude to go off. Again, this is the largest eco-friendly project in Australia, 3,500 acres. There's, there's nothing like this. It is massive. It is like a small country. Um, you know, for some of you, you might not have any grasp on what 3,500 acres is like. Uh, but my father had about 300 acres when I was a kid and we used to get out amongst 300 acres and it was like endless. It seemed like he owned the world. Um, so 3,500 acres again is like a small country. Uh, so those are the people that you'll be meeting um, and seeing most likely. And they're the ones behind this project really making it happen. All right. So the location, let's take a deep breath. It out. It's a beautiful Mount Warning, as you can see here. Um, and this was the center of a massive super volcano millions of years ago. Um, this is probably the most lush, fertile soil in all of Australia with access to endless clean water, endless places where we can grow food, and endless beauty as well. On the other side, facing away from Mount Warning is called Sphinx Rock. This actually up here looks like a Sphinx. I wonder if this was a pyramid at some point and an actual Sphinx. I'll have to dig into there and find out, see if we find a sarcophagus. Um, but this thing actually is the largest rose quartz crystal in the world. This entire thing is rose quartz. So energetically, this place is fantastic. By the way, Mount Warning, is directly connected to a place called Uluru, which is the center of Australia. And they say when lightning strikes here or in Uluru, it can be felt. So if it strikes here, you can feel it in Uluru. If it strikes in Uluru, you can feel it here. Somehow they're directly connected. And again, this is a, a very sacred space. Um, I'll just read this. Millions of years ago, Mount Warning was a super volcano. Uh, whereby the border ranges were actually the outer edges of a huge volcano. So this property now lays in the enormous caldera with many waterways, creeks, dams, forests, and rich volcanic soil. Like I was saying, you can pretty much plant anything anywhere. Everywhere you look, it's green. Um, this is a subtropical rainforest. Um, as far as the climate there, you can see the border ranges uh, from this photo. Again, Sphinx Rock also called Mount Burl, and pretty much everything you can see is the property that we're discussing. As far as access, we're about, when I drive, it's about 45 minutes to the airport, but again, it's under an hour to the Gold Coast Airport, so, you know, if you travel a lot, you're still close to an airport. Um, it's not a super busy road to get to Kulangata Airport either, so, you know, it's easy access. It's not like you're stuck in New York traffic or anything like that. It's a pretty relaxed, beautiful country road drive uh, with also access to Byron Bay, which is one of the most beautiful beaches and chill out places in the world. Um, I lived in Byron Bay for about six to eight months. I absolutely loved it. I used to swim out in the ocean there every day and swim with the turtle. There's some turtles there, a little shipwreck, um, amazing access to restaurants and just everything you could possibly want. 
and even even Byron Bay is getting a little bit too busy these days for my liking. So just being a little bit outside of there um, is, a, is a great place to be. So just a few of these photos, um, you can see this is called Talwood Dam. This is a one kilometer, it doesn't look like it, but it actually bends around one kilometer lake. It's beautiful and pristine. You can swim, we can have boats in this. Off to this other side, there's actually a spot uh, where we've set up a water slide. You can actually water slide and go down into it. Uh, we can put up some little blow up toys, trampoline, have some fun if we wanted to, um, or just keep it pristine uh, for swimming and everything else. There are also land sites along the lake here. So if you actually wanted lakefront property, there is access. Um, this is gonna be a first come first serve basis for people who are investing in this thing. And this is another little dammed off area. Um, there's quite a few little reservoirs and rivers there. Um, you can see this is a cabin built with the local black butt wood. Um, this is also, just so you guys know, this, is, this was cleared and used as a black butt uh, plantation. Black butt is a certain kind of tree. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's perfect for making countertops. You know, like you have beautiful wooden countertops, you can do wooden floors, or you can actually build with the trees. So in your two and a half acres, you're gonna have access to quite a bit of this. Um, every, one in every three trees needs to actually be cut. Um, this is due to the local fire hazards that are out there. So basically they're saying they've planted everything a little bit too close. So there needs to be about one in every three trees cut, um, which provides millions and millions of dollars just worth of timber. So this is a timber that we could cut and sell and use the funds for the community um, for all kinds of things that are needed, or we can actually use this wood for ourselves to build cabins, again, to have hardwood floors or whatever we choose to use it for. Actually, you can see this one's just a simple little primitive um, you know, cabin that was built. So what kind of homes can you build? Well, we're looking at off the grid, eco-friendly, safe, compliant, modern, and beautiful. Um, essentially, you could build a traditional type of home, whatever you like, um, and then basically set it up to be eco-friendly, meaning you would have rain catchment systems on the house with catching all your rain. Um, we could do a bore, um, or you can have the actual water delivered. And then we have, you know, obviously you put your solar panels on your roof. Um, I'm gonna contact Elon Musk and let him know we have the largest sustainable community going on out here in Australia and see if he wants to come out and work with us with some of his technology. He's got solar roofs and you can get a roof that, that is basically cheaper than what you'd normally get and it's solar powered. And then he's got these amazing battery banks from Tesla that you can put inside your home that powers everything very efficiently. So lots of connections are being made. You could choose to build a container home. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these tiny homes that are absolutely gorgeous, but it's everything you need. Um, you could do some of these earth ships, um, which can be quite nice and, and eco-friendly as well. Um, I've even been looking at glamping tents. And we can use a lot of recyclable materials in the actual building process. Um, we are going to have kind of cabins and everything pre-done, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, tiny homes, a lot of times you can actually build an entire tiny home for thirty to $50,000 and it's got everything that you need, a beautiful little spot. Um, and then it's up to you if it was just you or you and a partner, or if you have children, then it might be a little bit bigger. Um, but a lot of these tiny homes and container homes can be built quite efficiently and quite cheaply and last a really long time. Uh, and like I said again, I've been looking at these glamping tents. So just down the track from Nightcap is another place that has these glamping tents already set up, smaller than this one, and they rent out for about $300 a night and they're like always booked out. So there's a potential business opportunity here as well. Um, this is what the inside of one of these glamping tents looks like. It's very simple, 
but boutique and gorgeous. You can see the hardwood floors, beautiful bed. You know, you could have your, your AC, um, heating, air conditioning inside of this thing, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, uh, there's a place that manufactures these. You can get them with toilets attached. You can get two to three bedroom glamping tents. They set up in about three days. They range anywhere from $30,000 to about $75,000, depending on what you want. And literally, you set it up in three days. It's absolutely gorgeous. The materials like antifungal, antibacterial material that will last years and years and years. Easy setup, fairly well insulated, um, and just amazing. So the idea is we'll be setting up some of these things. Once we have the DA approved, we'll be setting these up so that when you guys come on tour at that time, or if other people come on tour later on, they can actually look at a glamping tent, go inside, check it out, see how long it's there, look at some of the tiny homes, look at these other opportunities where everything will be set up in, at a package price. It's like, if you want this, this is the price, fully set up and done. Make it as easy as possible for you. Right now, obviously, we're just talking about the actual land space, but this gives you an idea of you know, what you can do with container homes. Containers are quite cheap and what you can do with them. You guys have probably seen the tiny homes and there are people that I've already contacted and talked to, like I said, anywhere from 30 to about $75,000. They outfit it with everything that you need. Um, popping the solar power, popping everything onto there, water catchment, and you're set up and ready to go. Okay, so house and land packages will be offered soon. Uh, very shortly, we'll be providing a range of cabins on site for purchasers to inspect. You can actually stay in it, see how you like it, and choose from many different options. You might have an option that's like, you know, studio apartment type of thing or three bedroom house. And it'll have a price tag on it and what you see is what you get. You'll just be like, yep, I want that. You pay for it, it's built and set up on your actual 2.5 acre spot and you're up and running and ready to go. Um, they will meet all the requirements and be basically a turnkey operation. All right, so let's take another deep breath. Let it out. Somebody's asking how big is the site in terms of hectares? Okay, so it's one hectare. 2.5 acres, I believe, is one hectare. That's what it is. Um, half of that will be your land site and putting up whatever you like as far as, you know, you want to have little kids play area and different types of things. And then one and a half acres of that is just going to be left to pristine, beautiful space, which is also yours to play in. And the thing is, this is the type of project that you guys aren't just buying 2.5 acres and putting up fences, okay? You're buying into a 3,500 acre property. We're all using this together. You're hiking, you're biking, you're, you know, there's gonna be a community center and I'll get to that in just a minute. But you're buying into this entire project, not just the 2.5. Okay, so what about food? Um, like I said, this is some of the most fertile soil on earth where you can grow a whole range of foods, avocado, mango, banana, macadamians, olives, pawpaw, fig trees, any type of herb, vegetable, strawberries, berry bushes, local bush tucker is already growing all over the place, edible greens, uh, roots, all kinds of different things. And like I said, the local sovereign people that are there are walking the song lines once again and pointing out all the different local bush foods. Um, you know, I saw this thing basically on a local news channel not long ago of a bush fruit that's known to cure cancer. Um, and I can post a video of that. So there's some really amazing access to um, traditional medicinal herbs and plants and fruits already growing out in this space. And we can pretty much pop in whatever we want. Me, I'm going to have lots of avocado trees and I love you know, I love just having a garden and growing stuff myself. So the idea is, you know, with part of this investment, bring in a lot of permaculturists going around and pretty much 
putting foods everywhere and having so much food growing that we just have endless amounts of food and then giving it away as well. There's a fruit shop down at the local commercial precinct where what, what we have left over, we can just sell out of there um, at a very cheap rate. Obviously it can be offered to the community as cheap as we possibly can or even for free. Obviously if you pick it. So imagine four o'clock rolls around, you grab a basket, you walk out into the orchards, you pick some fruits, you pick some veggies, you take your kids out there um, and just imagine raising organic free range children and having enough families that there's kids of all ages. You know, the place is gorgeous. It's already, you know, I took my daughter there. We went down to the river and there was already, you know, families there with kids. My daughter's age, she just got right in there, started playing in the river with them. You know, imagine every afternoon at a certain time, we go out, we actually pick some of our foods. Kids are running around playing. You don't have to worry about them because there's adults and, and kids all over the place. I see a few questions coming in. Um, apologies, it's already been mentioned. Can the properties be rented out, Airbnb, or must be owner occupied? So we have multiple opportunities here um, and there's gonna be different spaces. So we're gonna have a whole spaces where if you wanna buy this and live there full time with your family, you can absolutely do that. There's also gonna be spaces that are more open to the public. So if you wanna rent it out on Airbnb, you can also do that as well. Uh, for me, this is gonna be a bit of both. I'm actually gonna go there and stay there at times to do my own healing, my own fasting. It'll be my little health retreat for myself. I might even live there full time. I haven't made that decision yet. We'll see how it grows over the next two to five years. Um, and I also will be building a place to have as an actual fasting center renting out on Airbnb. So there are bylaws, you know, making sure that, you know, people aren't doing drugs and having big parties out in the woods and not being noisy. Uh, but those things can also be included on Airbnb, et cetera. Uh, can we build our own house? Absolutely. You can build your own house, whatever you like, as long as it's um, in accordance with, you know, council and making sure that it's safe. So if you're a builder and you know how to do that, as long as it's, you know, built to spec, you can build whatever you like. It's, it's basically your, your space to build. What happens if you buy into this and then want to sell it? Uh, sold as if you regular home. Yep you can buy and sell. So you buy it, you want to sell it, no problem. You have an actual title to that. You can build a house, you can sell it. Um, there are some bylaws that we'll discuss here in a minute and there's going to be clusters as well. So I'm actually going to have kind of like a heal thyself Tyler Tolman cluster that is close to me, uh, which, uh, you know, people that kind of have the same philosophy as me are all going to be in that kind of space. Why? Because I don't want to smell your barbecue, your marijuana smoke, your cigarette smoke, and all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> so there are going to be places that are a little bit more healthier where we're getting together and motivating each other, but there are also bylaws for the entire 3,500 acres. So there will be no animal slaughter. There's all types of other things uh, that we need to abide by, um, but essentially you'll be able to buy and sell based on these same types of uh, bylaws and there's going to be plenty of people interested in this type of thing especially in the future so once once things get cracking on the roads are being widened and bitumen's coming in and all this stuff is happening and attention you know the price is going to go up obviously as it does um, so it could be a good business opportunity or investment that way as well okay so I just got some photos of me and my daughter here uh, planting some trees, those avocado trees and some other things. What is there to do? So a certain portion of the investment from every person that invests into this is actually going into the community and will be used for infrastructure, roads, um, internet, okay? So we're not gonna have towers on the land, but we are gonna have access to I don't know what you guys call it, CBN, actual cable. So cable will be buried throughout um, the entire place on the roads so that we have access to actually plugging in internet. So you can plug in inside of your own home, whatever you like. You can have Wi-Fi in your house or you can just plug it directly into your, 
Apple TV or your computers or devices or whatever you like, but there will, no, there will not be big towers putting off a bunch of radiation, causing brain tumors and that sorts of thing. And that's what we're getting away from. The only towers on this property will be trees. Okay, so a lot of the money that's gonna be invested is going to be put into a healing center. So this is gonna be a massive community slash, I like to call it a healing center. It'll have a gym, it'll have an internet cafe, it'll have all your traditional things that you can go and do, yoga classes, potentially spin classes, boxing, martial arts studio. So this is also gonna be a place where there's opportunity for jobs if you're a personal trainer. You know, if you live on site, you can come down and pers you know, do personal training daily or teach yoga classes or if you do massage or some type of healing modality. Um, I see pyramids on this land. Um, you know, I'm really big into Egypt and I've wanted to build a pyramid myself for a very long time. Probably won't look just like this one, but maybe something similar. And I imagine having sound and light healing. Um, I know there's some amazing technologies that are available for amazing sound healing. You guys know me. You know I have a big crystal bowl and I do sound healing myself. I can imagine some local original people with didgeridoos, sound bowls, Lucia Light, which is an amazing technology for opening your pineal gland. Um, and so, you know, I see this place as being hip like stuff to do we're not just gonna be out in the woods like you know with some crickets and nothing to do this is gonna be a modern uh, community center with potential massive salt pools and jacuzzi and internet cafe and plant-based nutrition foods you know with the garden growing out back you know chef Cynthia Louise you know coming in and teaching people how to make the best plant foods on the planet you know, these people go out back, they pick everything, they come in, they make pastas, they make Mexican food, they make, you know, Chinese and sushi and this and that and everything. And you can pop in and have access to organically grown, beautiful foods, you know, while you're working, doing your thing, grabbing an organic coffee, whatever it is, child center for kids to play in, and so much more hot tubs, saunas. And this is up to us. It's like, you know, the people who invest into this, we're all going to get together and be like, all right, what do we like? What do we want? You know, I personally would like to have some tennis courts, maybe even a, a racquetball squash court. Um, you know, I definitely would love to have a beautiful plant-based internet cafe. You know, I'd like to have a child center where my little girl can go. I'd love to potentially have Montessori uh, or something similar type of schooling. So maybe we hire some teachers, create our own little school program. Um, there's also the green school, which I'll talk about in a minute as well. So imagine having, you know, horses where you could go up horse riding throughout the property, uh, potential zip lines um, where, you know, we can go up and have fun. And these are all potential businesses. So this place is very popular. They filmed a lot of like adventure television shows on this land already. There's been some really cool stuff that's happened out here. I've actually watched some of the television shows where they did things on the lake. It was like celebrity get lost in the woods or something like this. It's actually quite funny. Um, so these are all opportunities for businesses. You know, people can have a job. Maybe your kids, you got some teenage kids or slightly older, can go run it. People are coming in here, going on some zip lines, going horseback riding, potentially motorbike trails. These are electric motorbikes, so no sound. We don't have, you know, rah, ripping all through the woods, which is part of the process as well. We don't want to have, you know, loud motorbikes and four-wheelers and smoky stuff out there, but an electric bike with trails that are designed for it, awesome. And people could come in and have access to doing all of this stuff, and each one of these opportunities are businesses that are produced by this community, which means a certain portion of the profits actually go back into the community to improve the community center, to improve the roads, to not have to pay land taxes every year coming up, and potentially enough left over even being divided back to the original investors. So you are basically buying a share in an actual project 
that you are owning. You're not just buying a piece of land. You're actually buying into a project that has many different opportunities available. So somebody is saying, is there mobile phone reception on the land? Down at the lower part of the land, yes. Um, some parts of the land, you can actually get 3G service from the towers that are quite far away. Um, but obviously, there's, you know, there's quite a few spots where, no, you wouldn't have any service at all. So, you know, you can pick a place that would have access uh, to the local whatever it is, uh, you know, pro service providers. And, you know, they're, yeah. So basically, you could go there, you could take your phone with you, and where there's actually land sites that do have some access, you know, if, if you needed reception, you could definitely do that sort of thing. If you're the type of person that doesn't want to have, you know, access to cell phone, whatever, you could go off somewhere else. And again, there's going to be cable buried um, to your space with high-speed internet. So if, you know, there's an emergency, you can contact whoever you need. Will there be Airbnb option in like-minded area? So for the like-minded area, yes, as long as it, on the booking of Airbnb, it has basically, you know, things that they need to follow. If they're coming there to do a juice fast, they're coming there to do some healing retreat, they're not coming there to party, crank up the music, and drink alcohol, and do drugs. So I know that the Green School, um, I'm friends with the owner of the Green School, his name's John Hardy. Um, you can see me back here volunteering. I volunteered a few times uh, for these green camps for kids. And the Green School is actually looking for a location in northern New South Wales to actually open a eco-friendly, sustainable school. Um, and they're quite amazing. They grow a lot of their own food that the kids are eating. They have solar power. They have turbines. They make their own biodiesel fuel out of recycled oils. Uh, from the restaurant, they do all kinds of really cool recycling projects. It's outdoor style teaching and learning. Um, and like I said, they are looking for a location in northern New South Wales, which is where this is at. So these are all opportunities that we could potentially create a school um, all the way from kindergarten through to high school, which is what the Green School already is. Um, I talked a little bit about the Black Butt. Forest plantation, again, giving access of millions of dollars um, to this project to do all kinds of cool things. So currently, there's approximately 120 kilometers of dirt roads. There's 27 kilometers of main roads and 100 kilometers of four-wheel drive tracks. Uh, there's a four-year plan already in place. For initial widening of the roads, it will be a two-lane road, so two cars can go back and forth. You can kind of already squeeze on the dirt road that's there, but it will be widened. It'll be graded. It'll all be nice and beautiful, which most of it already is. And then they'll be putting bitumen down throughout the entire place. So it'll actually be really nice roads. You can use a car, motorbike, whatever you need to get to your actual land site. Um, there'll be other licensing opportunities for jobs, solar installation, electrical work, sustainable building, construction, farm management, health retreat, all kinds of different roles there, restaurants, childcare, rainwater, bore, you name it. There's going to be lots of different opportunities out here at this site. Um, like I said, we're getting away from the potential of forced processes that are happening um, around Australia for ourselves and our kids. Um, being in our own community, we can create our own little bylaws and our own little safety nets for each other. Uh, there's not gonna be any 5G or other towers. There's gonna be no power lines, sewage or water mains, okay? The only thing that will be buried there along the roads is our actual high-speed internet, so you have access to that. Your power, your water, and your sewage will all be sustainable, eco-friendly. So the toilets, Actually, you know, you can have a toilet in your house that looks like a normal toilet and it flushes, but it goes into um, something with a lot of bacteria that basically mixes and churns and it pretty much self-digests. It goes through this amazing process. You can literally open it up. There's no smell whatsoever, even being used months and months and months. And you can literally shovel the stuff out when, it, when it's done with its end product. It doesn't smell and it's some of the greatest fertilizer that you can actually use 
in your garden, out on the trees, wherever you like. Again, there's going to be water catchment systems for each individual, so you can get your own stuff going on there. Okay. Um, as far as septic, we can ask about some of that stuff, but like I said, the way these systems work, there's some already set out there where it is kind of like its own septic tank that just goes through this three-stage process. You open it up, you can take the stuff out and use it as fertilizer. So I'm just looking through some of the questions real quick. Let me move on real quick and then I'll answer questions at the end. Um, so again, two and a half acre lots. Right now we are pre-DA submission. Um, what I will say is this DA has been worked on for a very long time. There's over $1 million of investment that's been put into this. Ecological studies, like I said before, all the things that you have to do to submit a DA for approval had been done. And like I said, over a million dollars has been spent and this DA is 100% compliant with the actual state law. With the regulatory processes in place, it's 100% compliant. It'll be lodged within the next few weeks, okay? So, you know, for some of you, if you wanna get in now, two and a half acres is $200,000 Australian. For the two and a half acres, Plus, you're actually investing into this entire community project. Will you receive a title? Yes. You'll also receive a local original title from the original people. Okay. If you want to wait till the DA is submitted, this will all be public information. You can see the thousands of pages of documents on every aspect of how this thing is going to be built and managed and done. Uh, conserving the local wildlife, where the roads need to go, everything's already been planned, the maps, the land site, like everything's already been done. If you wait until it's approved in the next couple of weeks, uh, the price goes up to 225. Okay, that's not a major increase. Some people might want to wait. Okay, they, the approval will most likely happen by December of this year okay so we have a good eight or nine months for the approval process once the approval process goes through that's going to give you an automatic increase of two hundred seventy five thousand dollars minimum so why is it from 275 to 325 the reason is the place i call tolman ridge or lakefront properties all of your premium Spots are going to be 325,000 minimum. Okay. So the other spots that might be in a valley might be somewhere where you don't have great views of Mount Warning or great views of the border ranges, whatever, but it's still a beautiful two and a half acre land site. Those will be 275. So essentially, by getting in now, um, you guarantee yourself access first and foremost, to pick the land site that you actually want. So you can actually choose a premium site at the 200,000 by getting in early, which is a huge leap. That's basically if you were to invest $200,000 in the next eight to nine months, you'd potentially have a $125,000 increase. I don't know what kind of percentage that is, but I could tell you that that's a, a majorly amazing investment. Uh, if you wanted to turn around and sell it at that point. But again, we're looking at people who really want to come onto this land um, and live there. But we believe from what we've seen already, we'll have about 50-50. 50% of people actually want to live there, bring their families there, stay there full time. 50% of people want to actually buy a spot and build something, rent it out on Airbnb. And some of those people might want to just invest and wait eight or nine months uh, and turn around and make some money on their investment. So that's basically what it looks like. And again, you can go out to the property, okay? You actually have to go to the property and inspect it and go on tour and meet everybody before you can actually purchase. You can't just say, oh yeah, this sounds great, I'm gonna buy it. No, you have to actually go to the land, we wanna meet you, we wanna have a conversation, see who you are, um, and we want you guys to experience this property. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can meet Rich, you can meet everybody, you can ask all the questions you like um, and take it from there.
All right. So again, 18th of April to the 12th of May, um, I will be doing an actual tour of the site. All right. Here's what you get. Private use of one hectare, dozens of businesses available within the community with profit share, uh, 10 to 25 year old forestry timber plantation um, access. We can be using that obviously to build up the community. There's orchards, farming, parks, et cetera, we'll be putting in um, and a multi-million dollar community center that will be built. All right, so let's see what kind of questions I have. Any questions you guys have, feel free to ask. Yep, somebody was asking, DA means development application. Um, we will have the recording we can send to everybody, just so you know. Uh, Peter Greenham, uh, the DA application approval process, saying if it doesn't go through, um, you can talk to Derek Zillman, which is a professional. You can talk to Planet, which has been doing this many times. This project is 100% compliant, meaning that it really cannot not go through. Um, if you're 100% compliant with all of the laws and the things that are put into place when you, when you lodge an application, um, there's not really anything that can block it. Um, the local council could go to the government and try to change the laws to try to block it, but I doubt that's going to happen. What were the site tour dates once again? It's the 18th of April um, or the 12th of May. I'll actually be out there. Um, you guys can also get a pack uh, that has all of the information, which I have here, the product info pack, tylerstolman.com forward slash village. And that's going to have an information pack with all of the info there. Um, we've also got all of the site plans where all of the two and a half acre lots are, where you can build so much more that I don't have in this presentation. So really guys, the essence here is, I personally wanna have access to a place where I can go and live and grow my own food and get off the grid and get away from the current control, control structures that exist. Um, I wanna have a place where I can go and it can be a health retreat. So getting away from Wi-Fi, getting away from pollution, going somewhere and actually fasting and healing myself or eating really healthy food taking my family, taking my daughter, being able to go out and pick my own berries, my own fruits and veg and things of this nature. And essentially what I see is having a healing center here. So bringing people out who actually need to heal from the cities, putting them up in different locations that they can stay and go through this process. So, you know, there's the possibility here where individuals could invest in two and a half acres and build something that they do want to rent out and I'm actually bringing people to the healing center and filling up all of these different spaces where people can stay. I know at my space, I'll have a sauna, I'll have you know access to all the things that people need to really heal themselves. It'll set up with a you know a professional juicer, a blender, uh, like I said, sauna, enema kit, all the things that you would need to basically go out into nature, totally detox and heal yourself. It's what I'm personally gonna use it for and I imagine there are thousands of other people that would like to come to a place like this, pay a weekly rate, and maybe go through a weekly juice fast. Um, obviously, we'll also have people that'll be on site that can come up and clean the place and take care of it and manage it um, for this type of spot to be rented out. Can you have two separate dwellings on one lot? That's a very good question that I don't actually know. Um, I know there's a few people on here, Rich from Nightcap, if you could answer that question. If you know that, that would be great. Will the 50% that plan to live there be intermingled with the other half who want the Airbnb? So the idea is that we're going to have kind of separate locations where it's like, okay, all of the actual living people are going to be in one big location. And then we'll have locations where it's a little bit more transient with potentially Airbnb type of people. Cause you might not want to live there full time and have 
you know, new Airbnb people coming and going every day or every week or whatever that looks like. And like I said, there will also be clusters of people who want to live there full time that are fully dedicated to like evolution and health and all these other types of principles that can all be in certain areas together. That type of thing. Yep, so Denise is basically saying once you buy into it, will there be other cost expenses involved to be paid out by you or us? So that's the whole idea of what we're putting together is that there are enough businesses. So the land project that we are buying into already has assets that are public. So we have a restaurant already functioning, fully running down by the road. There's a petrol station fully functioning and you know a, a little store, a little storefront shop. Just like petrol, you stop, get your petrol, go in and grab a drink, something to eat. There's a fruit shop. There's a full caravan park. I apologize, I didn't have more photos in there. I don't know if I left that out. That's my bad. Uh, but the full caravan park right on the river where people can come hook up, stay as long as they want. All of these are full running businesses already with a portion of their profits going into the actual land project. The portion of the profits of all of these things will pay for land tax, will pay for road improvement, will pay for et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is also about 25% of the actual investment from each individual that will go into building the roads, building the community center and, and paying for all the things that we choose as shareholders of Nightcap Village. So maybe I haven't been super clear on that, but that's basically what we're doing. So if you can add up 300 land sites times at least 225, $275,000 and do the math on that, 25% of that is a very large portion of the funds that are gonna give you know tens of millions of dollars to build the community center, make the roads, build businesses and make this project successful. So I hope that makes sense. So Rich is saying subject to the DA approval, compliant secondary dwellings are intended to be permissible, absolutely. So that's part of the DA process. Thank you, Rich, for that. All these little minor details, if you guys could see the DA application, it's thousands of pages long. It will be public so everybody can see it. Uh, and once it's lodged, you know, it's, it's just a process of counsel and everybody going through step by step every piece. Uh, Planet, the company that's put all of this together has done many projects just like this. Um, and they're pretty much telling us it's 100% compliant. It's gonna go through, it's just a matter of getting it in. Can you be non-Australian to buy this? What if my friend, American, <laughs> I'm American, okay, and I have my own spot um, already picked out. So I'm an American, and I'm gonna be owning this, this place as well, my own spot. So the answer is yes. I wanna go 50-50 for this approval. I believe because you're buying a vacant land, yes, foreigners allowed to purchase. Got it. So what I might do is turn this off here at this point. Um, I, what I would say is get the info pack guys, come and join me, it'll be great. We'll have quite a few people going across the land. We got a big, amazing like four wheel drive bus. Like I said, we'll have the, local, the locals there doing a smoke ceremony. It'll be educational, inspirational, and this land is energetically amazing so come check it out um come be a part of this and it really can become something quite awesome i'm going to let you guys keep talking asking questions and answering questions just in the text and i'm going to jump off and i just want to say thank you guys so much for being on here and we will get to you the recording of this um, and feel free to message me ask any questions that you have and book and schedule your tour Come out and join us. Check it out. This place is fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. Have a beautiful day, and I will talk to you later. Cheers.